The run-in is upon us. Let's have a look at what's in store for each of the top 10 teams in the championship promotion run-in. Welcome back, everybody. I've had a lovely week off, but we are back. And I mean business. Having a look at the fixtures, the form and the tables. And we are going to analyse every team's run-in in that top 10. We'll do some projections at the end as well. We'll get into it imminently, but do please... Hit that like button and help support this video. We'll start with Fulham in first place, but really there's not a great deal to say. We're expecting them to probably be up with a few games to go and with a total in the mid-90s somewhere. I suspect they will go over the 100 goals mark as well. It would take something like Fulham not winning another game. One win takes them to 80 points. I don't think I'm sticking my neck out in saying I think we can disregard Fulham and they will be promoted automatically. In second place are Bournemouth, who really do seem to have the keys to their own destiny in their pockets. They're six points clear. They've got games in hand on everyone except Forrest, who are a fair way back. They do have the third hardest run on the basis of current opponent position and opponent's position in the eight-game form table. Look, let's do a little bit of a rollout. Luton are top of that form table, and they are closest to Bournemouth in terms of actual points per game scored. If Luton were to roll out the 18 points they'd scored in their previous eight games, in their remaining eight games, Luton land on 81. In that instance, Bournemouth would only need four wins in those 10 games and one point from somewhere else. Basically, four wins, I think, is going to do it for Bournemouth. And a big collapse and a big run is the only thing I think now that stops them getting automatic. Luton are in third, and we just mentioned in the Bournemouth bit that they are top of the form table, and they've just got to be ready to keep going in case Bournemouth are going to open the door and let them in. It does feel like that automatic spot is very much Bournemouth's to lose, though. In terms of Luton, they do have quite a tricky run. They've got Millwall, Huddersfield, Forest, Cardiff, Fulham. They are all in the top eight of that eight-game form table. However, remember who's top of that eight-game form table, it is Luton. I suspect 13 points in those last eight games. Four wins, uh, one draw, three defeats. That would take Luton to 76. I think they're going to get playoffs with that amount. Can they finish the job? Huddersfield in fourth have only seven to play. And whether it's likely or not, there are three teams who can pass them using the games in hand advantage. Three defeats in four in all competitions for Huddersfield. And there is a huge three-game run from round 41 against Luton, QPR and Borough. Those three in a row. I think if they win four of these last seven, they go to 75 points. We've said repeatedly, though, someone might miss out with quite a big total. It's been a great season for Huddersfield. They wouldn't want to be that one that did miss out. Sheffield United are in fifth spot with eight to play. They will be wary of Middlesbrough and Forest, who could pass them in terms of those games in hand. Two of the remaining eight games for the Blades are against QPR. Oddly, those two sides haven't played each other yet. That does mean that four of the remaining eight games, including the two obviously against QPR, are against teams currently in the bottom four of the eight-game form table. That will obviously change as we go. Two points per game for the Blades would take them to 77. They would be massively unlucky to miss out with that total, although I think it happened in 2014-15 to Wolves. Five wins, one draw, two defeats should do it for the Blades. They've shown to be capable of two points per game form, certainly since Paul Heckingbottom arrived. In sixth place, Blackburn, and we almost need to forget everybody else when it comes to Rovers. It's all about them. They need to sort out their bad run, else playoffs are not going to be happening at all. Eight defeats in 15 in all competitions. Worse still, failed to score in 10 of the last 13. They need to get Brereton Diaz back from one piece uh, from Chilean international duty, and Bradley Dack is back. Can he help that creative process uh, move a little bit quicker? Seven to play. Five of the opponents, to be fair, are in the bottom half right now. If they beat all five of those guys, they would be at 76. On current form, they're not looking like doing that. But things can change. Middlesbrough currently in seventh place. They could 
overtake all the three teams directly above them with their games in hand. Um, eight consecutive wins at home for Borough. However, only one win in seven away from home. That was, though, their previous game in the league against Birmingham. After they played Peterborough away from home, which is a nice away fixture if you're not in good away form, they play five of the next seven at home. They do still have the top two to play and then a big juicy round 43 clash against Huddersfield. The ludicrous home record could do the business for Borough and if they do get in the playoffs, we could be saying something crazy like they've won 11 of their last 13, 12 of their last 13. Who knows um, to get in there? For QPR in eighth, it's a very similar message to that of Blackburn. If they don't turn around their own form, there is no conversation in terms of stats and numbers to even be had. Eight points in the last 10 games for QPR has seen them only going in one direction. And when they get back, three of the first four games, Fulham, Sheffield United and Huddersfield, particularly the games against Sheffield United and Huddersfield can be seen as big head-to-heads. They almost need to win. Maybe disregard Fulham, but they almost need to win two of those three games. Two points per game for the rest of the season sees QPR land at 75. Will that even be enough? And will the um, two quick games against Sheffield United in the last runnings of the season define QPR season? Might define Sheffield United's season as well. In ninth place is the fascinating case of Nottingham Forest, who... If we do something that I always advise we don't do, and we add on three points for their, each of their games in hand, have the best upside out of anybody outside of the top two. The thing we've been saying for Forest for the longest, longest time is, will they run out of road? Will they run out of steam? Because that first seven games has meant for the rest of the season that automatic promotion form would be necessary to just land in the playoffs. They are on course for it. Can they keep going? Have they got the stamina? Have they got the mental strength to just string this out for another couple of months? They've been great in the FA Cup. There's a huge head-to-head -head against Luton on April the 15th. Otherwise, it's an even split, I think, between teams in the top half and teams in the bottom half. If they've got the legs, the playoffs are there for Nottingham Forest to take with those games in hand. And finally, in 10th place, Millwall, who had been on a great run and topping a lot of those form tables, just that one little slip before the international break against Stoke. Now, the big upside for Millwall is the run of games after the away trip to Luton at the weekend. They play Swansea, Barnsley, Preston, Hull, Birmingham and Peterborough. They're all sides down there in the bottom half. If Millwall were to draw with Luton and then did two points per game for all of those more, quote, winnable games, they would then be at 70 points with one game to go. Now, the theme of this video is that that probably won't be enough. So, the five wins in a row that Millwall did very, very recently, and look, if they beat Luton, they are away and going, but they almost need another five or six game winning streak. The fixtures look okay. Can they do it? Those were my thoughts on the run-ins for each of the top 10 teams. Here are some stats and some projections which you can interpret as you see fit. Please do not feel the need to explain to me the notion that the past does not predict the future. I get it, but it makes very interesting reading um, to just give us a little bit more insight. Here is the uh, simple points projection. So if we roll out the points projection for every team um, for every game right throughout the season. This is what we end up with. Uh, Fulham with 95, Bournemouth with 88, the top two. Luton maintaining in the playoffs there, 76. And Huddersfield, everybody stays put except, look at Nottingham Forest, they jump all the way up to fifth. Sheffield United would take the last playoff place and Middlesbrough would miss out um, on the basis of a half a point. Um, and again, I'm aware that's not possible, but it's a fun exercise, isn't it? A little bit more interesting, I think, is the projection based on the last eight games. So what I've done is I've taken the team's current total, taken their points per game over the last eight, and then projected that on to all of their remaining games. Does that look any different? Um, Fulham, still top, still on 95. Bournemouth, a couple more points for them. Luton would remain in third. Look at Forest. They would be up in fourth. Huddersfield would drop to fifth. 
Sheffield United would be in six. I think, if I'm remembering correctly, just Forrest and Huddersfield swapping places. But the same four teams. Millwall would be closest there. Obviously, they've had a good recent run uh, with Middlesbrough at eighth. And Blackburn and QPR, who were obviously paying for their poor runs, uh, would drop all the way down to ninth and tenth. So, again, read into that what you will. That is the form projection. The final nerdy thing I did was attributed the position in the form table over the last eight games to every opponent for every team going through to make an average form position, not league table, but form position over the last eight games um, and see who on the basis of that eight game form table who has the easiest running and who has the most difficult running. Again, interpret it however you see fit. So most difficult running would be Luton, average form position 9.5, Fulham 10.2 and then Bournemouth. So those uh, perhaps those top three there have the most difficult run-ins. The easiest run-ins, apparently, um, Huddersfield, the third easiest down there. Average form position, 13.57 of their opponents. They have fewer games, though. Uh, Sheffield United, 14.37. And Blackburn, apparently, according to the form table, have the easiest run-in with an average opponent form position of 14.71. So that is our look at the runnings for each of the top 10 teams in this championship promotion race. If you haven't already, please do hit that like button and your next challenge, should you choose to accept it. I'm not particularly interested in you deconstructing my opinion. I would really love to hear your opinion. All opinions are valid. We are predicting the future here. Let me know how you see the run in going. Who's going to be a climber? Who's going to be a loser? Who's going to go on a great run? Who is going to crash and burn? Let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to hear from you and I'll try and read and reply to as many of them as I possibly can. In the meantime, if you want a good laugh before I say bye, here is a look at the playoff picture from a few weeks ago and you can see how much I've changed my mind. Thanks for watching.